All right, let's go. Avata 2. Let's see what you can do after all that influencer hype. Ah, that's quite nice. Oh, wait. Oh, it's tumbling again. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Ah. ah. Stupid fucking drone. Ah. Okay, so the DJ of us 2 has now been out for six months or so. All the influencers who have received the drone for free have hyped the absolute shit out of it and have put it down as the best drone since sliced cheese. Well, in my opinion, that is simply just not true. I've now had the DJI Vita 2 for a couple of months now and have been flying it in lots of different scenarios. And there's definitely flaws. And in my opinion, even definitely areas where I think my old DJI Vita 1 was better. Okay, so let's get straight into this comparison review between the Vita first version and the Vita 2. First up, the most important thing for me about a drone is the camera quality. So. If you watched my review of the first Avatar, you'll know while the camera quality of the DJI O3 system was good, it wasn't quite to the level of a GoPro in my opinion, hence why I did hack the first version of the Avatar apart completely to be able to run a naked GoPro on top, which some people thought was unnecessary, but for client jobs, it definitely helped me out a lot, especially when flying indoors with dimly lit scenarios. However, the downside to this was that it added weight and made the already very sluggish Avatar 1 even more sluggish than it already was. Don't really enjoy it in terms of like its power output. No power in this drone whatsoever. However, with the Avata 2, there is actually no need for any of that nonsense as the camera quality is much, much improved with the O4 camera system now giving us D log M instead of just the D city like that we had on the Avata 1 in 10 bit and a bigger sensor for more dynamic range, which is noticeably better than the O3A unit which was decent in good lighting conditions, but anything less than that, and you would notice the overly crushed shadows and overly blown out highlights. The sensor in the Avata 2 is actually the same sensor that DJI use in the Action 4 camera, and it's really good quality, and in my opinion, just as good as a GoPro 12 or 13, there's barely that much difference anymore now. The Avata 2 also has an added bonus of allowing us to film in 4K up to 120 frames per second compared to the maximum frame rate of 4K 60 frames per second of the DJI Avata 1 noise level. Again, if you would have seen my review of the original Avata, you would know how much I despised the loud pitch shriek that came out of that drone. So loud. My gosh, everyone in the park can hear it. It was truly the loudest, shriekiest drone I've ever flown and borderline embarrassing to fly when people are around. Well, again, the Avata 2 has definitely improved this with a much lower pitch to the sound, which is something more similar to a Mavic drone now. Especially when you're just cruising and not really punching the throttle too much, which most of the time you would do with this drone anyway, as it is a cine whoop. And I do think this is down to potentially the ducts being made of a not so hard and heavy plastic as the original Vata, which also has the benefit of making the drone a little bit lighter in weight. Downside of this is that the less sturdy ducts than the original Vata means it won't be as durable in a crash. And I've actually seen many instances of broken Avata 2 ducts where people citing that it's not as durable as the first Avata was, which was virtually impossible to break the ducts actually. And also if you did break the ducts of the first version of Avata, this was a much more simple repair than what the Avata 2 would be where it looks like you would need to buy and replace the whole outer shell rather than the actual ducts with the way it is designed now. I've had a little check online to see if it's possible to buy replacement ducts or replacement outer shell like you could do with the Avata 1 and I actually don't think it's that easy to get so it's basically DJI's way of guaranteeing that you must buy their very lovely DJI Okay Refresh you know very cheeky DJI. Flying in breezy windy conditions now as I mentioned earlier they have made the Avata to 33 grams lighter than the Avata 1 but it is still just a 4S drone, so the power of the drone is still not that great compared to other non-DJI Cine Whoops out on the market. And I feel like less weight has actually made it worse in windy breezy conditions and it gets affected more than the Avata 1 did. Don't get me wrong, neither of them fly that well in windy conditions because, you know, they are Cine Whoops at the end of the day. But I can confidently say out of all the Cine Whoops that I currently do own, including the Avata 1, 
that the Avata 2 is definitely the most affected by the wind. The video transmission experience. The Avata 2 now uses OcuSync 3.0, which is improved from OcuSync 2.0, which was on the original Avata, meaning that the video transmission is noticeably better, especially when flying through obstacles, such as through a large house, like I was doing for this job here in Cannes in France. I was often pleasantly surprised with the Avata 2 on how far into this huge house with thick, thick walls it could actually fly without too much lag and latency, which I probably would not have been able to get away with any of my O3 air unit drones or the Avata 1. DJI and the influencers claim that the battery life has improved and maybe technically it has slightly if you do one of those pointless hover tests for 20 minutes. But in real life usage, I have not noticed a significant improvement in the battery life between the Avata 1 and the Avata 2. Which makes sense since the battery capacity of the Avata 2 batteries are actually less than the Avata 1 batteries. The overall flying experience. It was no secret that I wasn't a fan of flying the Avata 1 overall. It's the worst drone that I've ever flown. It felt sluggish compared to the other Cine Whoops I'd flown before and most likely that was due to the top heavy design and power to weight ratio not being as high as it should. The Avata 2 is definitely better in this category and I don't hate flying it as much as I did the Avata 1 but it still is not as good an experience as flying my sub 250 Dolly Fly which I've talked about which I much prefer. The Avata 2 is noticeably faster than the Avata 1 at the same tilt angles and floats more in the air when you're off the throttle which makes you feel like you're actually really flying a true FPV drone rather than the brick that the Avata 1 felt like in the air. The yaw tumble issue. The Avata 1 had issues with it tumbling towards the ground after a fast yaw turn in either direction which meant you sort of had to fly it in a way that would avoid anything too harsh when it came to yaw turns. After a firmware update I found that this was much less sensitive on the Avata 1 and even when I tried to make it tumble for a six months later review video that I didn't make earlier this year, it just wouldn't. So that was really a positive for the Avata 1 with the firmware update. Now, <laughs> the Avata 2, for some reason, seems to be tumbling on me all the time. And this is six or seven months old since it's come out. Um, they've done firmware updates and yeah it's really bad and even on one instance as you saw at the beginning of this video that was not a joke um after this mini dive towards the ground i did a you know a your turn to recover and it just absolutely lost it i tumbled and i lost control i couldn't really gain control back with my sticks in time because of how close it was to the ground and to me and it just came straight in my direction out of all the different places it could have gone the actual chance of it coming straight back and smashing me on the head and it made it thank god for the goggles it made a huge dent on my um on my goggles and now as funny as this may seem now at the time i was very pissed off as that maneuver that i did on a regular fpv drone would have never caused it to freak out like that and for this reason although it has so many pros compared to my non avata drones i would still use those on a professional job at least to start over the dji avata until i know that i can really trust this completely which at the moment i can't say i do some of you might argue that if it does tumble or do something where i'm not able to control it through the sticks then just press that lovely emergency stop button on the top. And yeah, it's an option, but as I mentioned in the original review of the DJI Vita 1, the emergency stop button is just not something that's in my muscle memory. For someone that's a bit more of an FPV purist, as I mainly fly non Avata quads and those don't have any kind of emergency stop buttons. It's all manual. You need to be able to land. You need to be able to recover from crashes. It's just something I'm not naturally used to with the Avata, so difficult for me. <laughs> so some other smaller benefits of the Avata 2 that I've seen so far compared to the Avata 1 are the camera of the Avata 2 can tilt down further without seeing the ducks which can be useful for a Mavic style top down shot in normal mode. There's also improved Rocksteady 3.0 versus 2.0 on the Avata 2 which means you don't necessarily have to use gyroflow and poster stabilized like you would have to with the Avata 1. The Rocksteady 3.0 is very good and can actually save you that step in post. Now, a huge pro for many has been the improved placement of the SD card. Uh, previously, it was in a horrible position between the ducks and the props, which was tricky to get out to say the least. But now it's on the side of the drone, which makes 
much more sense and it's a lot easier. You are also able to charge the drone through a USB-C port rather than needing to carry a separate charger, which is actually amazing. It might even mean that you need less batteries than before because you can be charging through a power bank as you go on throughout your day. There's also the ability to share your screen uh, to someone's phone via Wi-Fi rather than needing to use a USB cable like you did with the Avata 1. So which should you buy? You might think the answer is straightforward. The Avata 2 is newer and better in most ways. So of course, go for the Avata 2. I definitely agree with you if you were looking to upgrade from the Avata 1 and or have good flying experience, flying FPV drones. However, if you're someone new or someone moving over from Mavic drones, looking to get into the hobby of flying FPV for the first time, I'd say go for the Avata 1 as you can buy everything you need to fly it much cheaper, um, especially secondhand, plus have the added security of the virtually indestructible ducts of the Avata 1 rather than the less durable and less flexible Avata 2. While you're learning to fly an FPV drone in manual mode, you will definitely crash a lot and therefore a lower cost and more durable drone like the Avata 1 is the one I'd definitely recommend. And once you're over the crashing stage, you're going to want to know how to fly as cinematically as possible. So go ahead and check out this video here that I made where I talk about all the top tips I know on how to get cinematic footage out of your Avata drones. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care.